and welcome to this video on OCRB Salters, uh, Bonding and Structure. This is the OZ topic. My name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and basically we're going to go through this video as a revision video, uh, just summarising the content that you need to know for this part of the, um, the ozone story um, topic in OCRB Salters. Now the slides that I'm using here, um, you can purchase them, the great value for money, a great addition for your uh, for your revision notes that you've got, it'll help you get that top grade in chemistry. Uh, if you just click on the link in the description box uh, and be able to get a hold of them there. Now you can see these are dedicated to OCRB salters and match the specification points as you can see um, listed on there taken from the syllabus. Okay, so let's start and look at electronegativity. So electronegativity is the ability for an atom to attract electrons towards itself in a covalent bond. So basically, the further up and right we go, here's our periodic table here. The further up and right we go in the periodic table, uh, excluding group eight, that's why we've blacked these ones out, then the more electronegative element is. So we can see here, fluorine would be the most electronegative element in the periodic table. Now we can use uh, numbers actually to quantify how electronegative an element is. And we call this the Powling scale. Uh, and basically, um, um, this fella here, Mr. Powling, came up with this scale and he basically uh, signed each element a number. Now fluorine is the most electronegative, so four is the biggest number in the scale here. Um, and obviously we're going down to someone which are not so electronegative like hydrogen. Now what we're looking for is a difference really. It's not really about the number, it's about the difference between the two numbers. And basically the bigger the difference is in electronegativity value, the more ionic the compound will be. Okay, so a difference that zero will be purely covalent. So for example, you might have Cl2, because you've got two chlorines bonded together, they have a value of three, um, and obviously that will um, obviously that will have an electronegative electronegativity difference of zero. Okay, so polar bonds. So covalent bonds, they can become polar. Um, if the atoms attached to it, they have a difference in, in electronegativity like the numbers that we've seen before. And like I say, the bigger the difference in the electronegativity, the more polar the bond will be. So you see here, we've got a hydrogen and a chlorine. Now, um, looking at the electronegativity difference from the table before, uh, you'll work out that actually we do have a, a reasonable difference here between hydrogen and chlorine. Now, you will be giving them numbers. Um, but what happens is chlorine actually pulls the electrons towards itself. We have a covalent bond here. Traditionally, the electrons will sit bang in the middle if there's no difference in electronegativity. Because chlorine is more electronegative, it pulls the electrons towards itself. And to show this polarity, we put little delta symbols next to it. Delta negative next to the chlorine, delta positive next to the hydrogen. And this shows this electronegativity difference. Like I say, some atoms which are um, don't have this electronegativity difference and are purely covalent, uh, these basically are not polar, and you can see here that the shared electrons in this covalent bond are right in between both of them, so it's not being pulled to either side. So atoms with the same, like I say, uh, with the same polarity, these are classed as non-polar. So an uneven distribution of charge that leads to polar molecules. Um, you can see here this is water. You see the charge is unevenly distributed uh, and so therefore we have a polar molecule. This is water. Uh, and look out for molecules that may appear to be polar. As you can see here we've got carbon dioxide. It looks as though it's polar but it actually isn't. Uh, we have a symmetrical molecule here. We have a little bit of symmetry and you can see uh, that we actually have no overall polarity. So carbon dioxide is a classic one. Even though it has a polar bond in it, the whole thing has no polarity because we've got this even distribution of electrons across the molecule. Okay, so look at intermolecular forces, in particular instantaneous dipoles. So an instantaneous dipole induced dipole force uh, or bond, it could be called either. Um, these exist between atoms and molecules. Okay, so these are not actually, even though it's got the word bond in there, they're not actually bonds as such, they're just weak forces. Okay, so um, you can see here we've got uh, intermolecular forces and bonds. We've got three different types we've got hydrogen bonding, permanent dipole, permanent dipole, and instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. We're going to look with this one first at the bottom instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. This is the weakest type. So basically any molecule or atom that has electrons, this can form 
um, a dipole when it gets near to another atom or molecule. Okay, and this is like this is where the induced bit comes in, the induced dipole is brought about when it comes near something. So this occurs as the electrons in a molecule and atom, they move to one end of the molecule. You can see here the electrons were evenly spread in this molecule because it's come near another molecule, which I'll show in a minute, it's now nudged to one side and we get this temporary dipole or this instantaneous dipole, delta negative over here, delta positive, this grey cloud represents where the electrons are. Now this temporary dipole, like I say, only exists when two molecules or atoms are nearby, okay, so it doesn't exist when it's on its own. Um, and when they move away, this interaction is effectively destroyed. So let's have a look at neighbouring molecules. And you can see here that because we've got loads of electrons around here, the electrons in this molecule now move away because they repel each other. So now what we have is a delta negative and a delta positive next to each other. And these are attracted to each other for the length of time that these two molecules are nearby. Um, and so this is called an instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. Okay, this is the weakest type of force uh, that exists between these molecules. Okay, so let's have a look um, at an example of one of these instantaneous dipoles as well. Um, iodine is a classic example. Now, there's an instantaneous dipole, an induced dipole force between um, iodine molecules, and they form this very defined crystal structure. And you can see them here. These are the iodine molecules, but you can see they've been arranged in this very regular um, crystal-like structure. And um, what's holding these together is these uh, instantaneous dipole-induced dipole forces. So you can see here that we've got these weak forces that are holding the iodine molecules together. Okay, But look, these white lines, these are the strong covalent bonds. So make sure you know the difference between them. That's a bond which exists between the atoms and the weak forces exist between the molecules. Okay, you've got to know the difference. So basically, the bigger the molecule of the atom, the more instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces that you have because you have larger electron clouds. It's the electron clouds that are governing the, um, the strength of these molecular intermolecular forces. So actually, when we boil a liquid, we're actually breaking the weak instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces and not the covalent bonds. So for example, if you're boiling, say, like an alkane, um, when you boil the alkane, all you're doing is you're weakening them forces between the molecules. You're not actually breaking the alkane up. You need so much more energy to break them uh, bonds. So what we must do, though, is you've got to have enough energy, though, to overcome these forces. Some of the forces are stronger than others, and that's why they have higher boiling points. So larger straight chain hydrocarbons, these have more instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces and so more energy is needed to overcome these forces. So these are uh, when you go from your um, simple molecules like ethane, for example, which is a gas at room temperature. And if we go all the way to say like decane, which has got 10 carbons in there, um, that's a much longer molecule. There's more electrons, more instantaneous dipole induced dipole forces. And so therefore the boiling point will increase because it's a bigger molecule. It also has an effect on branching as well, because we can get some uh, hydrocarbons with branches sticking out. If it's got branching, it means these molecules can't stack closely together, um, a bit like, uh, unlike your straight chain uh, hydrocarbons. And what this means is this weakens the instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces, because there's less surface contact for the molecules to pack together. Um, and so what this does is it lowers the boiling points for molecules. So molecules with branching um, of a similar MR to molecules with no branching will have a lower boiling point. Okay, so let's have a look at permanent dipole, permanent dipole. So permanent dipole, permanent dipoles, these are a little bit stronger than instantaneous dipole and induced dipoles. So permanent dipole, permanent dipoles, these exist when we have a molecule with a permanent polarity. Okay, so classic example would be HCl, as you can see on there. What we've got is these weak electrostatic forces between these molecules. These polarities are permanent. They don't need to be near another molecule for them to be created. So they are a stronger uh, force between the two. Now you can see here, just like on the um, instantaneous dipole and induced dipoles, we have the delta negative part on one molecule is attracted to the delta positive on another, and we've got this interaction between the two. Now, 
These are actually stronger um, because they have this permanent dipole. That's the main reason. So we've already mentioned that already. But it is important to note that just because these molecules have permanent dipole, permanent dipole, they doesn't mean they don't have the other force as well. And the other force we're talking about is instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. So this permanent dipole, permanent dipole, is actually in addition to the instantaneous dipole, induced dipole. So this, these molecules have both types of forces. It's just its strongest one is the permanent dipole, permanent dipole. And we can test polar molecules by doing a really cool test. It's really simple. Um, so water is an example of a, of a polar molecule. Um, and what we can do is if we um, take a burette and we trickle the uh, water through a burette, so a fine stream of water, if we take a charged rod like this here, then what we should get is the water bending towards the rod uh, when we place this charged rod next to it. And this is because the water molecules in particular, it could be any molecule with the plow tea, but it's using water because it's more familiar, and um, these will align up in a very particular way to um, be attracted towards the rod. And that is a, a particular feature for um, uh, polar molecules. So it's a test. So make sure you're aware of that test. Okay, hydrogen bonding. Now, hydrogen bonding, this is the strongest type. So we're at the top here now. Strongest type of intermolecular force. So this is basically occurs when we've got some of the most very electronegative elements interacting with each other. So let's have a look. Hydrogen bonding occurs when we've got hydrogen, okay, obviously with hydrogen bonding, uh, in one molecule forms a bond with a lone pair on a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in another molecule. So we've got N, O, or F. Now these are the three most electronegative elements. Okay, so these have the uh, these have a very very strong polar uh, uh, polar bond, and so therefore they form very strong forces. And you can see here with the water molecule, water is an example of a hydrogen bond. Uh, we've got a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen on one, and the hydrogen on another. Um, and this obviously this very strong polarity between delta negative and delta positive forms a hydrogen bond. Um, and they might ask you in the exam to draw. Um, this setup so make sure you're drawing the bond going from the lone pairs on the oxygen to the hydrogen show all your polarities and make sure that it's really clear that this is different from a standard bond this is drawn dotted to show that as a hydrogen bond okay again just like before it's also important to note that water molecules not only obviously they have hydrogen bonding but they also have the two forces before it as well so they have permanent dipole dipoles a permanent dipole, permanent dipole, and they also have instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces. So they have the other two as well. It's just its strongest one is hydrogen bonding. Okay, we're going to look at some more features of hydrogen bonding as well, and, and this time link it with some properties. Now you can see here, ice is a classic, is a weird kind of substance uh, in some respects, because actually when we take water and we freeze it, um, we form ice, but the ice expands. It actually takes up more space. Now, this is unusual because normally when you cool most substances, uh, when you cool them down, they contract, they get smaller, and when you heat them up, they expand. So water is unusual in the fact that it expands when it cools. Uh, and the reason why is because we've got these hydrogen bonds. They arrange in this very ordered structure, obviously, to form ice. But they have these hydrogen bonds between the molecules, and this pushes the molecules further apart, and it makes them less dense. And so that's why ice floats on water. You've got bigger spaces between the water molecules because of these hydrogen bonds pushing these molecules just ever so slightly further apart. So let's have a look at the properties and compare these. So here we've got hydrogen, uh, sorry, we've got boiling points of hydrogen halides, as you can see in this graph here. Now HF is here. This one has the highest uh, boiling point because HF has, remember, hydrogen bonding. It contains fluorine. That was one of the elements that's needed to form hydrogen bonding. So the molecules here actually have a much uh, higher uh, boiling point compared to the other hydrogen halides. Okay, lots of energy is needed to overcome these electrostatic forces. When we get down to here, HCl actually doesn't have this hydrogen bonding. It has, um, well, it has dipole, it has permanent dipole, permanent dipole, um, but actually, to be honest, when it gets down to this stage, it gets to HBr and HI, they really have um, instantaneous dipole, induced dipoles are actually more at force here in terms of the uh, boiling points. So you can see that we've got a slight increase from HCl, HBr, HI, and this is because we've got an increased mass of the molecule, hence they have a bigger electron cloud, and they have more instantaneous dipole, induced dipole forces, 
uh, between these molecules. So obviously HI has more electrons than HCl. So we've got that increased force as we go up, and that's why it increases along here. Okay, so investigating the strength of these intermolecular bonds. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to measure the temperature of the surrounding air as the liquid evaporates. Okay, which is not too not too difficult. So the first thing we have to do is we have to create a control. Um, and all we do is just take some dry filter paper, place it around the bulb of the thermometer and take the temperature. Okay, and this is going to be our control. And then all we do is we're going to dip that bit of filter paper into these different solvents here. Now these ones have different strengths of intermolecular bonds. We've got hexane, ethanol and water. And we're going to leave these for about five minutes and we're going to record the temperature change on here. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward practical. Now, the idea is, is that substances that have a weaker intermolecular bond, these will evaporate much more readily and draw the most heat from the uh, surroundings. So this will result in a much bigger drop of temperature. Um, obviously, you can try it. If you lick your finger and then put your finger up in the air, you can feel that it cools down much more rapidly because you've got water on there. Um, and obviously, it's drawn that heat from your hand um, to evaporate into obviously into the air. So you can have a look here. Hexane, the strongest intermolecular bond in hexane is an instantaneous dipole induced dipole. It's just an alkene. The temperature change is quite great, 11.2 degrees Celsius. Ethanol, the strongest intermolecular bond is a one hydrogen bond per molecule of ethanol. So it can only form one hydrogen bond here. So the temperature change is 7.1 degrees Celsius. But looking at water, Water can actually hydrogen bond twice, so there's much stronger intermolecular forces between the intermolecular bonds between the water molecules, so therefore the temperature change is going to be much smaller. Um, it's going to be 4.3. It takes more energy to overcome them forces, so therefore the temperature isn't going to be the temperature change isn't going to be as great. So this practical is dead easy as you can see. It's just a very neat way of determining the strength of intermolecular bonds. Okay, and that's it. That is a summary of bonding and structure uh, for OCRB salters. Um, please show your support for the channel. It's all free. All these videos are free, completely free. Um, and you can access them whenever you want. Just subscribe to the channel. If you just click on that circle button there, and you can get yourself subscribed. Um, also, um, like I say, these slides are available to purchase. Great revision. Great to uh, help you get that top grade in chemistry to achieve what you want to achieve um, great to supplement your revision just click on the link in the description box and you'll be able to get the whole of them there good value for money <laughs> all right thanks very much cheers bye